Welcome once again, my dear friends, to the Voice and Visuals of Amber, episode number 26. Yes, again, it's going to be language in action. Language through literature in action. And we are going to continue with two more poetic or literary devices, which are also called the figures of speech. So, thank you, uh, Rahul Yadav. Thank you so much for making this request. So, the, the last time we did similes and metaphors, today we are going to do alliteration and assonance. So, both have got something to do with the sounds coming out of the words. Yes, whether it's a consonant sound or whether it's a vowel sound and where exactly. So we shall be dealing today with alliteration and assonance. Let's begin with alliteration, our third figure of speech or our third poetic or literary device. Alliteration is a poetic device when the writer, the poet, the author, the novelist, he uses the same consonant sounds at the the same consonant sound at the beginning of several words coming close together or they can even follow one another. So one word beginning with the same consonant sound is followed by another word beginning with the same consonant sound that is called alliteration so let's have a few everyday examples which i call the crude examples let's see the first one those of you who remember or still see the sunday movie on doordarshan i remember my father used to wait for that six o'clock movie that those were the days when you know we had a TV and then we had around 20 neighbors, you know, coming in the evening, the children, some of the ladies interested in watching the feature film or as on those action at six o'clock. So they would come and my father would always say, OK, chalo time ho raha hai, zara film feature le le He used to always say film feature. He would never say feature film. So feature so this was the caption this caption would be there sometimes for one minute sometimes for two minutes and at times you know very boringly it would be there for even five minutes all right and everybody would be waiting and then would be cursing all right uh, and saying okay come on on with the show so this used to be the caption before the sunday movie feature film follows so you have the same consonant sound, f, f, f. Okay. So you have the same consonant sound. Feature film follows at the beginning of the three words, and these three words follow one after the other. They come together. Feature film follows. Let's have another one. Here they don't come in words following one another but they come very close to together all right in words that are separated by unstressed syllable words for example is now is is going to be very unstressed because you don't pronounce is you know in a very i would say pronounced manner or you don't stress upon it so our captain is cool and calm in the crisis so you see, inner, 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 not stressed. So cool and calm. So and, you don't say and, you just say um. So our captain is cool and calm in the crisis. So captain, cool, calm, crisis. So you have the same consonant sound of k, almost following one another in the words. Words separated from each other okay over very short i would say 
uh, distances okay and they are separated by words which are non-stressed or unstressed our captain is cool and calm in a crisis so you have captain cool calm crisis all right so yes this could be even even uh, Vinod Kohli because in the crisis we have never seen him lose his cool it's only when you know he celebrates all right he perhaps gets very excited maybe you know to just show to the opponents or maybe to just you know lower the morale or the spirit of the opponent or the opposite team but of course you remember Mahindra Singh Dhoni, Mahi, you know, when you write this sentence, our captain is cool and calm in the crisis. So this is a wonderful example of uh, alliteration. Loves, labor, lost. So you have three words, the title of a play, all right, a comedy by William Shakespeare. So loves, labor, lost is a popular comedy by Shakespeare. So you have le, le, le. Okay, in the title, at the beginning of three words following each other. So this is, these were examples, everyday examples of alliteration. Now let's have some poetic examples. Again, from that wonderful poem, The High Women by Alfred Noyes. The moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas. Now, the same lines were used by me in the previous uh, session as examples of metaphor. The moon was a galleon. The moon was a ship. Metaphor. All right, comparing two things without the use of the words like or as that we normally use for comparisons but then this line has you know double literary devices two literary devices you have the metaphor and at the same time you have the alliteration ghostly galleon girl girl so you have yeah two consonant sounds sorry the same consonant sound coming from two words all right, or at the beginning of two words following each other. Ghostly galleon. So that is alliteration. Plus, of course, the same line has metaphor as well. And, you know, what a lovely, lovely poem, therefore, uh, Alfred Noyes uh, wrote. Again, from the same poem, the road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. The road was a ribbon of moonlight. So the road was a ribbon. The road was a ribbon, a metaphor. So the road and the ribbon are compared. The road is compared with a ribbon without the use of the words like or as. So an example of the metaphor, but then at the same time, you have road was a, was a ribbon. The road was a ribbon. The road was a ribbon. The road was a ribbon. So you see, the stress is on R, R, and the stress is not there in these two words that appear before the uh, that appear between the two uh, words with the same consonant sound that is road and ribbon. The road was a ribbon. The road was a ribbon. The road was a ribbon. Was a was a was a was a. Okay, so was a. You don't say the road was. A uh, ribbon. No, you can't read you know English like that. So you, this is therefore not stressed. The road was a ribbon, and normally the to be verbs, the prepositions, the conjunctions, they are not stressed. Okay, or the helping verbs was were they are not stressed. So the road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. So here you are. An example of alliterations and then you have a first-class example of alliteration 
as well as another poetic device or figure of speech that I'll take it up, that I'll take up next time in one of the subsequent sessions over the cobbles he clattered and clashed in the dark in the yard. So over the cap, over, over the cobbles he clattered and clashed. So ker, ker, ker. Separated by words that are not stressed. So over the cobbles, cobbles he clattered and clashed. He clattered and clashed. All right, in the dark in the yard. So another example of alliteration and then you have a simile as well as an alliteration okay in the next line dumb as a dog dumb as a dog uzza, uzza, uzza. you don't say dumb as a dog no you say dumb as a dog dumb as a dog uzza, uzza. so dumb as a dog he listened so dumb da da Duck the duck, duck the duck, duck the duck. So dumb the dog, he listened. So you have two words separated by two words which are non-stressed, which are unstressed, and these two words which have been separated begin with the same or start with the same consonant sound. Duh, duh. Dumb the dog, he listened. So these were the examples of alliteration. Now let's move on to the next figure of speech, which is again quite similar, but then different and slightly more complicated to write actually. It's more of a challenge, you know, for the poet, for the writer, for the author. It is easier to devise an alliteration than it is to devise an assonance. An assonance, the sameness in sound between two syllables close together, created by the same vowels but different consonants. So same vowels, same vowels but then different consonants at the beginning of the word. Or you have the same consonants but different vowels. So same consonants, okay, there you are. B, B, but different vowels. A, U. All right. So this is a little more challenging, you know, for the poet or for the writer. The sameness in sound between two syllables close together, okay, close together, created by the same vowels. A, A, A. But the vowels come inside the words beginning with different consonant sounds. R, okay? B, H. All right? So same vowels coming inside the words, all right, with different consonant sounds at the beginning. The rat is at the back of his hat. The rat, R, but then at doesn't have a consonant at the beginning, it begins with a vowel. At the back, so you have ba, back of his hat. So this is therefore an example of assonance. So you have the vowel sound, okay, coming in the middle of the word, inside the word, and the words begin with different consonant sounds. Okay, again, you have the same. Another example, the same vowel, uh, vowel sound following one another. The arid air and aroma of the plane affect, of, the, of the place affected me. The arid, very dry, air and aroma of the place affected me. Normally we don't use aroma, you know, for the, this, when you have the air, the scent, the smell coming out of food is normally aroma. But then the writer has taken a bit of a liberty and allowance. The arid air and aroma of the place affected me. So it was very dry and it had, you know, maybe the aroma of Sutki Match 
all right that's fish which is dried and then you know sold transported and eaten after 20 30 days and it does does give you know for some it's a lovely aroma and for others it's a stench so whatever so the arid air and aroma of the place affected me so you have the vowel sounds the same vowel sound coming at the beginning of so many words right and then you have another example Sundar yes Washington Sundar Sundar batted beautifully so you have the same consonant at the beginning but you have a different vowel vowel is different same consonant b b but different vowel yeah so a and u u u so battered and then b beautifully b so e beautifully beautifully so e and a so you have the similar the same uh, same consonant at the beginning of the two words but different uh, vowel sounds or you have the same vowel sound coming at the beginning of a number of words following each other or staying very close to each other okay so this is therefore assonance but the easier one to frame is the assonance with the same vowel sound at the beginning of the words that follow one another or are close to one another this one is slightly tough but then here we have an example the crumbling thunder of seas now you see you have this er uh sound thunder er uh, crumbling er uh, coming in between two words that follow one another but beginning with different consonant sounds k th all right but this er uh, inside the word inside the two words the er uh sound is the same the crumbling thunder er uh, crumbling is it this is more tough and this is you know almost i feel sometimes you know forced but then that's it it is it it gives a certain rhythm you know to the lines the crumbling thunder of seas this was a line from robert louis stevenson and then you have edgar allan poe writing this down he lied down by the side of his bride he lied down by the side of his bride lie i by sai again i okay so the same vowel sound i i i lie by sai bride i but then coming inside the words that follow one another or are close to one another but they begin with a different consonant sound so l b s b but then the vowel inside them is the same vowel sound lie i by sai bride so that is therefore assonance so you must have you know sensed it that framing and assonance is tougher unless of course you have the same vowel sound uh, coming at the beginning of words following one another or close to one another this this pattern is easier to frame than the other pattern okay so that's assonance all right alliteration will have only the consonant sound so this is easier actually to frame so that is all so two more poetic devices or figure the speech covered so i hope uh, mr rahul yadav you are happy about it and next time we'll again take two more uh, figures of speech all right and again in lots of these figures of speech the example from the high women would be the most popular one absolutely a stunningly beautiful poem the highwayman the story of the highwayman his beloved bess and the villain tim the ostler right so i had taught this poem 
when I was an English teacher in St. Michael's High School, Patna. And I'm sure some of my ex-students would remember uh, this poem very, very fondly. So that's all. It was Asanus and Alliteration today. Thank you. God bless. See you next time. Yes, even if you are vaccinated for COVID-19, please, please take care. Don't remove the mask and follow social distancing. Take care. God bless.